let's talk about graphing. Of course, graphing is related to math, but in earth science, we interpret graphs all the time. On our reference table, especially, there are a few graphs that we need to understand the relationships between the variables and what the graphs are telling you. Graphs are really explaining a story. So in this video, we're going to focus on two things, the variables of a graph and the relationships that a graph can show. Let's look at variables first. So in a graph, um, the graph will express the relationship between two or more variables. For what we're dealing with, we will always be looking at two variables only. As you get into more advanced sciences, you'll see graphs that have three variables or more. Now variables are the components in an experiment that can be changed. And there's really two variables that we'll be looking at in this video. The first is the independent variable. That's the variable that is selected to be changed in an experiment. We can also call it the manipulated variable because we're choosing to change it. The other variable is called dependent variable. This variable is being tested. Um, it depends on the other variable, so we also call it the responding variable because it's a response to whatever change we make in the manipulated variable. On a set of axes, the x-axis would have the independent variable and the y-axis has the dependent variable. Let's take a look at an example of a situation and see if we can pick out what would be the independent and the dependent variables. A researcher is studying the effect of sleep on aggression, thinking that less sleep will lead to more aggression. She has some people sleep six hours per night, some people sleep three hours per night, and some people sleep as much as they want. She then monitors the aggressive behavior during basketball games among the participants. Let's see if we can identify the independent and the dependent variable in that situation. So in this study, the independent variable is the hours of sleep that the participants are receiving. And the dependent variable is the aggressive behavior because that depends on the hours of sleep that they get. In a graph, we would have these two variables. Hours of sleep is what's being selected, and the response to that selection will be the aggressive behavior. Let's look at another example and try to pick out the variables. So say a researcher is curious to see what effect classical music has on a person's level of relaxation. And for example, how low their heart rate is while they're listening to classical music. He suspects that listening to classical music will make people feel more calm and more relaxed. He lets one group listen to classical music for one hour, and he lets another group sit in a quiet room for one hour, and they hear no music. After one hour, he monitors the heart rate of each participant to measure their level of relaxation. So, let's again identify the independent and the dependent variable in this situation. So our independent variable is going to be the time spent listening to music because we're selecting one group to listen and one group to not. The dependent variable is the heart rate because that, according to the um, researcher, is going to depend on how much classical music they hear. Putting those two variables on an axis will look like this. Time spent listening to classical music would be on the bottom while the heart rate would be on the side. One more thing about variables, we have our independent, we have our dependent variables, but really there's one other variable that can exist in an experiment, and that is the controlled variable. This is a variable that is held constant during an experiment. Um, this ensures that the outcome is the result of whatever is being tested. I know that sounds very complicated, so here's an example. Say I have uh, two plants that are exactly the same, and I want to know how does sunlight affect plant growth? So 
I design an experiment. Here's my experiment. I take one plant and I put it in a dark room and I take another plant and I put it in a room with a light. If I were to do this and test, let's say, the plant height every hour for the next uh, two weeks um, by measuring with a ruler, there's a couple of things that I would want to make sure were the same between both plants. For example, I would control the type of the plant, the amount of water that I gave it, the type of soil, and the type of fertilizer. Because if those two, if any of these variables are not the same for both plants, they're going to alter my outcome. So by controlling them, I know whatever my outcome is, whichever plant's going to grow taller, I know it had to do with only whether it was in the light or not. So those are controlled variables. Now we have one more thing to discuss in this topic of uh, graphing, and those are relationships. Relationships come in four different flavors. There's direct, indirect, static, and cyclic. In a direct relationship, the independent variable increases as the dependent variable also increases. For example, if you were to graph the hours spent studying and grades you would receive on tests, there's a direct relationship between the two. As you spend more hours studying, you should do better on tests. In an indirect or inverse relationship, as the independent variable increases, the dependent variable will decrease. For example, if you increase the price of baseball tickets, the attendance at games will go down. Now a static relationship occurs when the independent variable, the x variable, increases while the y variable does not change. And finally, there are cyclic relationships. A cyclic relationship changes um, over time in the same way. So as the x variable changes, the y variable will fluctuate. Most of the time, that fluctuation is in a, in a repeating pattern. For example, the tides that take place every day. Tides are an example of a cyclic relationship because high tide is 12 hours from the next high tide and low tide is 12 hours from the next low tide. And this repeats each day in a cyclic pattern. One more thing about graphs, um, the rate of change, how fast a relationship is taking place, can also be referred to as the slope. So for example, this line compared to this line have very different slopes. Line A is increasing at a faster rate than line B. We can also say that the steeper the line, the greater the slope or the rate of change. And that's an important thing to keep in mind when we look at change on Earth. The faster something is taking place means that it's requiring less time to do so, whereas a slow change will require a lot more time. And the graph that we look at will reflect that. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching.